Welcome to Girls on Fire. Hi, guys. We're back with an extra special guest. Actually, I think he's still mad that this he's not our first guest. Yes. We're so happy to have Brian Hawkins with us, or like we like to call him Beehawk. Beehawk, thanks for being here with us. Um, thank you guys for finally having me. Right. Better late than never. <laughs> Beehawk, it's the second one. <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm the first HTM guy, I guess, right? Exactly. Right. Well, no, this is extra special because we're going to be releasing this sometime this week, but next week is HTM week. So yes. this is, we're going to be talking all the things today, but we're going to get started. Um, Beehawk, tell us where you are right now in your career, how long you've been there, just in case nobody knows you, which I feel like everybody already knows you. Um, <laughs> um, I've been in the industry for 30 plus years, It'll be 31 years, it's June 1st. And I'm currently in New Orleans, Louisiana, works for TriMedic site manager at Children's Hospital in New Orleans. And that's, cool. and that's it. And that's HTM it. on the line. Oh, HTM on the line, that's my um, podcast that I do. And also I do motivational videos and um, blogs. Now I have a newsletter coming out humanizing in healthcare. So just trying to do a little something, something. A little, you got everything going. I was gonna say, no one works harder than Brian Hawkins Sr. He also DJs and is a photographer and he's a father and a great, yeah. like the list is yeah. in low. Yeah, I got a DJ gig this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I try to stay busy. And how you do. <laughs> Well, Beehawk, we like to do a little segment here to just kick us off with some positivity. I know that you are one of our biggest fans and supporters, and we appreciate you because you've helped us so much get this thing all kicked off. So we start here with our moments of joy. And that is basically, we just want to start with something it could be like the littlest thing. I talk about the Starbucks lady through the drive-thru all the time and how she makes my day to something big. So if you have one, you can start off. If not, me or Kristen can start off. Sure, I can start off with one. Um, actually, I got some joy today. My mom had a little simple procedure where she had to get a pacemaker replaced because she had it many years ago, so she couldn't do an MRI because of the age of the pacemaker. But now she has a new one, so she's able to, if she happened to unfortunately go into the hospital, she can have an MRI and everything went fine and successful. So that's my little joy for today. Oh, yay, mom, I'm so happy. Oh, that's amazing. Well, mine's gonna sound really dumb after that. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have let me go first, eh? You could have let me go last. I didn't know you were gonna tug at the heartstrings. <laughs> ours is really not that. That was really good, Bianca. <laughs> yeah, Pressure. that was good. Okay, fine. I'll go, I guess. My um, moment of joy was actually last week. We were at the HTM Mixer and HTM Jobs just started their first ever virtual career fair. If you want more information, reach out to me. But Sydney and I were talking and we're like, if it's a success, which it was, thank goodness, we were going to treat ourselves to some Stanley Cups. Neither of us own one. We give it away every time at the mixers or expos or whatever shows we're at as our door prize. And Jamie overheard us talking about it. And she asked for my address, like texted me and asked for my address. And I was like, that's weird, but I'm not going to question her. And she texted Sydney and I and was like, I overheard your conversation. And I think you girls have already done an amazing job with what you're doing. Uh, and you were saying such nice things about it. my kids at dinner last night. And I've never met Jamie's kids, but I would literally take a bullet for them. That's how obsessed <laughs> I am with them. And so she ordered us Stanley cups on her <laughs> sweet own expenses. Oh, wow. They got delivered to us. So it was just, it's such a joy to have. I'm obsessed with it. I was just so thankful that she did that. I was like, that's such a good leader to overhear that and just literally ordered it 15 minutes later. I was like, well. So wow. wow. I just texted her my address too. <laughs> She's gonna be like, why, Brian? And when she watches this episode, she'll know why. 
<laughs> you want a bright orange Stanley? It matches our hair. Hey. <laughs> And that was a good one. That was I, honestly, yeah. both of you guys have a great no. I mine is this weekend. I went to West Palm Beach to see my mom for Mother's Day, and then I also got to see my goddaughter. She had her Holy Communion, so I was able to go there. So it was like a double take. But I gotta tell you the coolest thing. Okay, mm -hmm. so Pop, West Palm Beach, Palm Beach Gardens. It's in South Florida. It, it's a little bougie there, you know, and everything. And we're at the church for my goddaughter's Holy Communion. And I looked behind me for whatever reason. And there was this very tall man. And I was like, I like looked again and I go, is that Michael Jordan? And I go, no, no. And I go, no, Megan, there's no way. Right. <laughs> So then my um, cousin was sitting in the front row because it was her daughter and she texted me and like I looked at my watch and I, she goes, Megan, is that Michael Jordan? I go, it is Michael Jordan. It was Michael Jordan. It was the coolest thing I ever, I was like, oh my, I can't believe he's at the same church as me right now. It was crazy. No yeah. selfie? No yeah. selfie. Guys, first of all, I'm not Catholic, but Catholic churches are no joke, okay? Like, <laughs> can't move that seat until everything's done. The um, the priest or whatever, was, I don't even know what it is for Catholics because I'm not Catholic, but I was like, they like they like tell you you can't get up or anything like that until everything's over or anything. But I just like could not believe that Michael Jordan was behind me. So that was my moment of joy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's so awesome. I'm Greek Orthodox and I went to a service for greek easter not too long ago and you forget that it is so serious like okay. you, you can't be asking for selfies mid mid sermon <laughs> but <laughs> maybe after <laughs> he, was gone. he was like he i feel like people probably like saw him and like everybody kept looking back like is that really him and then he was like i gotta get out of here <laughs> mm. i've been spotted yep well it's not hard to spot him probably you know, he's the tallest man in the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, well, those were great. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and start with our hot topic. Hot topic. Which is really just all about Beehawk today. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, that's good. Um, so we told Beehawk that we wanted to, uh, so this is a young professional podcast. We have all ages that watch our podcast, but it's mainly a young professional podcast. So we wanted to get some advice from you, Beehawk, since you've been in the industry for 30 plus years and you've been all around and doing all the things that you've already talked about that you do. So we want you to give some of us young professionals or people in the who are wanting to get in the HTM industry some advice on what you wish you would have known when you started back 30 years ago. So if you have a couple pointers for us, we are all ears. Um. What I would have known 30 years ago, wish I would have known 30 years ago. Man, that's a pretty tough question. Because they have so much stuff today where I wish they would have had technology back then. I'll say that. Because yeah. we had to do all of our work orders by hand. So I thought I've reached the I thought I've reached heaven when they came out with carbon copies. So when we're doing a work order, we get two copies so we can give one to the client and keep one for ourselves. I thought that was heaven. That was but, living. <laughs> yeah, but now they have computers because we used to have our medical equipment was like a like when you go to a doctor's office, every patient has his own folders. That's right. how we did medical equipment back then. So wow. anytime we did a work order, we had to put a sheet and file it away. What so, if you lose? Yeah, sometimes you get a technician to keep the folder on his cart. So we're like, where's the equipment folder so we right. can know what the history is in it? So we didn't have computers, so there was no software. So I wish I would have had that back then. And as far as if I was a young person, they have today, they have like you guys, HTM jobs. And I shared this when I was in Wisconsin last week. When I finished school, there was no our med job so uh, i would the first well when i finished back up when i finished school i grabbed the newspaper right there i grabbed the newspaper to see if i could find a job in the classified <laughs> oh section my, me and chris are like wait <laughs> go to newyorktimes.com and i know what you're talking about yeah uh, it was no i didn't know what the jobs were in texas or in florida because 
I didn't have their newspaper. So I wish we had that back then that we have today, which makes things a lot more connected. So those type of things makes today's technicians have it so much more, it's more advantageous, I would say, for a young technician than it is back then. And also we have more mentors because back then the industry was still fairly new. Right. Whereas now you have people that's been experienced enough so they can share knowledge. There was no MD Expo back then. There was no MD Expo. There was no tech nation. So a lot of things we have today is a great advantage than what we had back then. Yeah. I feel like also for people our age, like trying to find mentors, especially ones that are accessible on social media can sometimes be tough. I feel like people in your generation don't always take well to social media or want to try to learn how to navigate some of the younger technology. So it's really refreshing. You honestly are better at every social media platform than me. And I feel like I should be better at that. So it's really awesome that you've just like taken over podcasting and LinkedIn and your influencer of the year for a reason. You really have dived into engaging with people your age, older, our age, and just making it like such a good platform to use. Yeah. And like I said, that goes back to maybe we all question, I wish I had someone like me. So that's kind of the reason why I do what I do, because sometimes young people really just have questions. And that's something that I try to be a resource for. And you do not have to be dating me, talking about people my age. I mean... <laughs> How old do you think I am? <laughs> like, okay, well, like, I call you big bro, so I don't yeah. think that old. There you go. At least you're saying papa. Oh, <laughs> godfather. <laughs> you're Megan's I'm, cousin. So, yeah, it's, so I'm, I'm still so in the I, sibling ranks. Okay, good. <laughs> old cousin Meg. Hey, and little there you go. Oh, there you go, man. Hey. Hey. Well, I have a question for you with all of everything you're doing. So which, as somebody your age, <laughs> what is your favorite social media platform to use? And which one do you think is the most, um, like, what do you, which one do you think is the most beneficial for somebody who, who is it, trying to get in the HTM industry? LinkedIn, you think, or something else? Well, I only use two. So Bye. Facebook, and I try to dabble in LinkedIn. TikTok is just... I don't know. I can't get it, but it's entertaining. But mm -hmm. to me, LinkedIn is one of the ones that I would recommend. And I tell all young people to get on LinkedIn because um, that's where it's like a professional Facebook, I'll say. And right. that's somewhere where you can really network at. Now, a lot of folks are using Reddit now. I don't know if y'all heard of Reddit. I mean, yeah. that's something. OK, a lot of folks are going on the Reddit and using that to network. And a lot of sites are coming up and some people are even making their own networks. Someone just recently texted me something called BMed Galaxy. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. It's a new, it's, it's a site that's, they put on there like, um, he was telling me to share my podcast on there. And he was also putting on there like suggestions, inner life equipment. So I don't know if it's overseas or what, but they sent me a message this morning about it. Right. Someone named someone named CJ. That's wow. all he had. Yeah. See what CJ's doing. I asked. I, I sent the reply to him. He never replied back to me. So. Well, I I I was gonna say I agree with LinkedIn, and then I think a lot of people are just. And I know this isn't social media, but po like podcasts. I feel like everybody's listening to podcasts. Even our pod. I mean, our podcast is just supposed to be like a fun, like very easy. Just me and Kristen laughing a lot and just trying to be entertaining to take you away from whatever hectic's going on in your day to day. And people will tell us that they just get a lot of their information from podcasts. So it's awesome to see yours and um, Sherelle from Multi Medical Systems and Chase and all of these people that are doing podcasts because I feel like even though we talk to some of the same people, you know, I feel like we're getting different perspectives on all of them and they're all done a little bit differently. So I feel like podcasts are huge right now or coming up to be a little bit bigger for us in this industry oh, man have you ever like there are a million of podcasts it's like yeah. it's unbelievable how many podcasts they have out there and, but in the htm industry i only can name like you said about four maybe yeah that i know of it's not too many of them i mean 
They're coming up though. There's a gentleman I saw on he started a YouTube page. Oh man, I wish I knew his name. He started a um, YouTube page about on um, HTM. So oh. I think we're gonna yeah. get a lot more. I was gonna ask too about YouTube. I feel like YouTube, I used to like when I think of YouTube, I think of me as like a weird little kid, like looking up funny <laughs> videos. Like that's what I use YouTube for. Like I, or music videos, like the newest, you know, Beyonce mm -hmm. music video, whatever. I don't really use it as an informational resource as much, but I've noticed myself since joining this industry, doing that more. Like when my car didn't start yesterday, mm -hmm. not a moment of joy, I immediately went to YouTube and Googled like, what are some reasons my you know, XYZ car wouldn't start up. And that was the first platform that I thought to turn to. So what are your thoughts on like YouTube in the HTM industry? Um, like you said, I use it also for how to, but the reason I started using YouTube is a lot of people use it for other things. So I figured that's their platform. So that's the reason why I went on YouTube. It's just because it's easier for people to access. Everybody is not on the podcast, like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And sometimes people hate just logging on to your website, but if they subscribe to the YouTube page, whenever you guys post something on YouTube, you get an alert. Right. So whenever y'all post your podcast, you get an alert on your cell phone. So that's one of the cool things about YouTube. When you subscribe to that person, anything they put out, it alerts you. So that's the reason why I use it because everybody else uses it. So yeah. I you had said that you have HTML on the line and then you're doing your like more of the motivational like videos and things of that nature. So what are you talking about on HTML on the line? Like what are the, some of the topics and things you'll discuss there? Are you just interviewing people or is every time, how, how, how is it done? For the podcast, like what I used to do with the podcast, I tried to go the route of just talking about topics mm -hmm. and I found that, um, I found myself being bored with it, right? <laughs> Listening to myself. So I said, that's when I decided to do the videos and put a little music behind my voice. So it kind of, it pictures and videos. So it kind of helps paint the picture better. And I use the podcast to more or less bring attention to people in the industry so that they can get their flowers or their limelight on kind of, so to speak. So, and I'm probably going to give my little secret out, but uh, yeah. It's no big deal. Like, like I do the podcast, and yeah, let's not tell anybody. I do the podcast, and then I do the um, motivational videos, and that's like the news. And then I do the blog. It's like the newspaper for the podcast and the videos. So I do all three. It's like I try to catch all three worlds and combine them together. And that way, if you don't like to hear me talk, maybe you like to hear me write. <laughs> <laughs> see, me, see me right I guess whatever way I want to say <laughs> or you can listen to a two minutes of me so I try to do all different angles and the newsletter is something I'm trying to do is to bring in like you guys are kind of sort of just bringing fun so the newsletter is like I'm interviewing people from different backgrounds not just HTM it's people that's the end user which is also healthcare technology management if you work in imaging and you operating a MRI unit, you technically part of healthcare technology management also. So I'll get that person to write an article once a month. And I use James Thorin from CBET. He sends me an article. Mm -hmm. He's in compliance. And then Glenn, he sends me something as far as like recruiting. And I'll try to reach out to an international person once a month just to sort of give a little variety. You know, I kind of like it get inspired by this company called um, MD Publishing. <laughs> Never heard of them. Yeah, they, they, do a lot, they do a lot of different things. You know, they don't do just one thing. So mm -hmm. I kind of like a baby them. So I try to do a little bit of everything just to keep things fresh. So that's probably where I get all this information from. I love that. So I have I a question too. Uh -huh. I feel like, uh, you know, with my job with HTM Jobs, we work with a lot of students or just like people entering the industry. And 
the one thing that we try to emphasize on is social skills, networking. Like you said, you encourage everyone to make a LinkedIn account just so that they can grow their connections in the industry because it's not only great to have a mentor, but also just as you advance in your career, knowing as many people as possible. So what would be a suggestion to someone that's entering the industry other than LinkedIn on how to best put their like best foot forward um, in a social way? Number one, I would say if you can go to a trade show or join an association, be man association, if they have it in your town. And if they don't, then that's where LinkedIn comes into play because people will have webinars on there. So I would tell a young person, try to get as much information as you can. Follow people like Brian Hawkins. You know, he's constantly sending us stuff and hot, I'm about to say hot girls on fire. <laughs> I'll take it. Damn. Girls, girls on fire, follow them. It's just, you know, get as much information as you can as a young person because, I mean, the industry is evolving so much to where you can never get enough information and you can never be too informed. So I would encourage them to just feed off all of the social media that's out there for them. Yeah, no. Okay. So I have, a, I have, we can go ahead and finish this off. I have, I want to see if you have what your advice is for somebody who's young, like us, <laughs> like all of us. <laughs> exactly. There you go. There you go. That says all of us. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you're, you're a mentor to many, like you said, in this industry, I mean, to us, of course, as well, but to someone who is just getting in the industry, what do you think is one of the biggest challenges? I know we had talked about some of the things like you wish you would have had, like technology, mentorship, things like that. But what do you think is one of the biggest challenges for somebody who's just getting in the industry right now, like as a BMAT one? Honestly, it depends on where they, I, where they went to school. Because sometimes they'll come into the industry and you may come from a great program where you kind of already have some type of introduction to the industry but my advice to a young person you asked me or no you said what the challenges are you asked the advice already one of the challenges i think a bma one would have i have an intern right now and soft skills is definitely one just being able to talk to the staff because it's in our industry it's a blessing and a curse because you don't know what you're going to come to work it could be a great day. It could be a terrible day. I guess that's why we love it. And that's why we might not like it sometimes. So my advice would be to them. One of the challenges that they will have to overcome is communication. Because it's very important on how you communicate with the staff and their concerns. Because a nurse might call you with some concerns for a piece of equipment. And how you respond to her can mean the world. And right. unfortunately, a lot of youngsters don't communicate much. Everything's on the cell phone now. Mm -hmm. So they don't have that engagement with people like they should to me. So soft skills is one of the biggest challenges to me. Well, your son's in the industry, if people didn't know that. And he, how, how old is your son? He'll be 22 in July. Wow. Okay. So he's been in the industry for two or three years now. It'll be three years in November. Okay. So what I know, I'm sure he talks to you all the time. Is he very outgoing like you are, or is he more reserved? God, he's like, he's reserved. He's more outgoing when at home. Yeah, he's real outgoing at home. When he's around people, he know, which is one of the reasons why he don't come to the shows. Well, two reasons why. People too old for one, he said. And Rocky at MD, come hang out with us. I, I tell him, he's coming to the next one. I tell him, like, just come. Yes. And so he's, no, nah, he's not outgoing. Like he, okay. he's not me. I'll put it that way. No, he's. <laughs> well, I think Megan and I talk a lot about this on our show, like imposter syndrome as a young professional. I feel like that just comes also with like probably not feeling confident yet being so new. You don't want to overstep. You don't want to seem like you know more than a, you know, senior position. So that could be a big part of it. But I feel like that's also where the mentors can come into play. And there's a way to keep that level of professionalism and still showing that you're confident in your role and the skills that you know, but it's okay if you don't know something to ask for help or, you know, turn to someone that you trust to be like, hey, I really could use some help with this. 
Right. Yeah, because he's a lot better now with, with the industry because he has a lot more experience. And I try not to be that that daddy that's trying <laughs> to catch every. I try to let him try to feel his way out, make a few mistakes, and learn on its own instead of just overbearing. Like, man, watch what you're doing. Tell me, you know, I, I kind of give him his space, but he'll call me if he really has a question and right. we we'll work through it. But he's getting better. He gets a two for one. He gets you as a dad and a mentor. Absolutely. <laughs> And he, he plays that son card, right? He begs a lot, too, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would, too. Power to him. Well, I'm, ex- I'm glad we could talk about him a little bit, but that's awesome. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit of fun with you, Bihawk, for Uh-oh. before we let you go. So we did this with Sydney when she came on the show, and we did a this or that. So Sydney, we- Sydney. Don't say Sydney, man. <laughs> Don't say that name. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the first the guest. <laughs> The other guest, the Krieg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we did a, okay, with someone we will not name, we did a this <laughs> with that rapid fire. So Chris and I are going to go back and forth. We'll give you two options. You pick, and it's just some fun that we're going to have to end the show. All right. All right, Kristen, go first. Okay. Early bird or night owl? Salty which one do you want me to, which one no. you want me to talk about? Just keep Wait. going. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. oh, I just Salty. answered once? Yeah. Salty okay. or sweet? Wait, say it again. Salty foods or sweet foods? Both also. <laughs> okay. I don't well, understand how this game works. <laughs> so I got to just pick one? I like them both. <laughs> I'm really going to stump you in a minute then, but I'm going to do another easy one first. Mm-hmm. Okay, beach or mountain? Beach. Uh, vodka or vodka? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Are you drinking vodka right now? <laughs> you should have had a cocktail. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. This is the first hot, uh, girls on. I almost said hot girls on fire. This is the first g- girls on fire after hours. <laughs> Um, okay, mine was going to be DJing or photography? Oh, wow. Um, currently, is photography. DJ is my first love, but I'm into photography just because I don't know what these young people are listening to today. So it's like, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of graduation wedding, weddings, Lord, a lot of graduation parties lately. And the music these kids listen to, I'm like, I play, but I don't know what they're saying or <laughs> Never, you know, I just play. rotting I our brains. I don't That's know if it's coming in on the right timing or whatever. I'm just playing it because I don't know it and not feeling it, and I'm just whatever, you know. Seahawk, you literally do it all. I feel like with the photography. How long have you been doing the photography and DJing? I've been DJing since '96. Wow. And I started doing photography. Don't think that you was only one or two years old then, or born. You know, I saw your I saw your brain looking up. <laughs> I was like, was I round? <laughs> <laughs> now, photography really started when my kids started playing sports, oh. and I was that dad that was filming everything, and I'll make the end of the season video for the team sports. And I just got into photography, so that's like my passion right now, though. That's awesome. Truly, honestly, the one piece of advice that when she who shall not be named and I went on your podcast, HCM on the line, you said as long as you work the hardest and you're yes. up earliest and stay latest, you will achieve anything you want to achieve. And that yes. has stuck with me. And I'm like, that's so true. And Truly, no one works harder than this man right here. So we are so lucky to have you as a mentor for the podcast in the industry. Megan and I don't hand us a wrench. We don't know what to do with it. But if we have any questions, we know that we can always call on you to just not feel dumb if we don't know something. So we really are just so grateful for you and like love what you're doing in every way. I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys too. What y'all doing is great because it's, I know the effort it takes to put on something like this. It's not easy. And it's especially doing video. 
I mean, that's why I haven't graduated to the video game. It's tough, and I appreciate your guys' efforts, and keep doing it. Black girls on fire. That's sticking up me now, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I kind of want to change it. Hot oh, girls on fire. <laughs> no, this episode, we're going to put hot girls on fire with Peacock. <laughs> Just three hot girls on fire. Just three wait, girls wait, on fire. Wait, 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 three. Wait, wait, the third girl. <laughs> you wouldn't wear the wig. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. Oh, we could have seen Sydney's. Or sorry, she who shall not be named. <laughs> Come on, I'm getting warmed up now. Let me can I reverse it? I'll become the host. Ask you guys some questions. Go for it. Go for it, Bianca. You can ask us some questions. Okay, great. I'll start with you, cousin. <laughs> Good. I got scared. What what do you like the most about the HTM industry, in your opinion? Well, I started just over six years ago now. And honestly, I had no idea what I was walking into. I didn't know what technician was. I didn't know really what a biomed was, anything like that. And so I felt like I had to learn it from the ground up what you guys do. And I still, I only know the surface level. Like Kristen said, I can't turn a wrench or anything like that. <laughs> I only know what you guys do. But I, going to MD Expo, being a part of Technician, being part of that community, starting YP at MD and doing the 40 under 40, which we're going into our third year, it's I know that everybody <clears throat> a lot older than all three of us <laughs> get worried about, you know, sometimes if there's enough people in this industry to take it over. And from doing the YPMD 40 or 40, this podcast, all of that, there really is. Like the people that are coming up in this industry are amazing and they're doing the coolest, craziest things. I mean, when we were watching the Tech Choice Awards at MD Expo, it's just so inspiring. Like Emmanuel Issa off of Mercy Ships, like what he does. It, yes. um, Jennifer that I had breakfast with with UB Hawk and Jamie and all of us, her new book that she's doing, like that's that's so cool that people are not just doing their jobs. They're doing all these other things to just try to expand the industry. So that motivates me alone to want to keep doing things like this and just be a champion. I feel like for the HTM industry and what everybody does here. So I, I don't know, just being a young professional is cool here. <laughs> all right, let's right, you ready? No, I'm scared. Dang, yeah, I was too good. My answer was too good. <laughs> yeah, was too good. Yeah, oh. There you go. So, you HTM jobs yeah. and you hot girls on fire. Which one you enjoy the most? You rather like working with Krieger <laughs> or Megan? <laughs> Are you? I'll say both. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a page out of your book on the this or that and say both. Both. <laughs> Both, they're different in the mm -hmm. best way. I work in the office with Sydney. So like having a good friend that we, you know, we're thick as thieves and we do everything together. So having that personal connection in the office and being able to turn and we bounce ideas off each other all day. And then getting to come on here with my favorite redhead in the entire world, Megan, and mm -hmm. just chat and let, it doesn't even feel like work. So it's the best of both worlds. I get to work and work and have fun. <laughs> See? So I'm better. Work and have fun. <laughs> I'm not I'm not done. I got another hard one for you guys. Oh, no. I <laughs> don't, have, don't have nobody on your show who can ask questions also. See, you're messing yeah. up though. Now, this one here, and Megan, you can't choose Jamie. Okay. And Kristen, you can't choose Krieg. Okay. I say Sydney after. Oh, I said it. I want to say it after the show. Mm -hmm. Or Megan. So, who is your favorite person in MD Publishing? You only can name one. Oh, the, <laughs> actually, I was going to say, I mean, I, I love everybody there, but there's one person <laughs> that comes to my mind that just makes me freaking laugh all the time. And it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not choosing you, Kristen, because it's too it's too easy. No, I know. I think we're gonna say the same person. Is that? Yes, that's what I'm gonna say. We love John Wallace, our editor. He's okay. 
funny. Okay. Even so what I, one of the things I love the most about indie publishing is we are a female dominated company. We have all women and then two men named John. Two, so we always Johns. joke, yeah, two Johns. So we say in order to work at MD Publishing, you either have to be a woman or named John. So, <laughs> which is, <laughs> uh, but that's our joke. So, you know, it's in a, our office, I would say is mainly young professional women as well. So um, we have our accountant, Diane, and then the rest is our art team that are all young women in the Nashville office. So having John Wallace almost like he would kill me if you heard me say father figure, but <laughs> <laughs> truly it's just such a comforting, warm soul. He will make you laugh so hard. He always brings the jokes. He's so complimentary. I'll come in the office and be like, new sweater looks great. I'm like, Thanks, Wallace. Like, it's just so nice. And he truly just is someone that you can turn to for a laugh or even turn to for advice because he has like a million kids and moves all around and just is such an amazing person. Yeah. No, John Wallace. And I'm going to also point out, I absolutely, so in our office, I have the mom office. So <laughs> it's like Jamie, <laughs> Kristen, the other Kristen. And then I have, I wanted to mention Joanna, who's our office manager, and you guys don't see her because she doesn't come to the shows, but she is the sweetest human in the world. She would, like, she is Chris, the other Kristen's other half for the shows. She does all of the behind the scenes things, any of, like, your name badges, things like that. She, like, makes all the sign and sheets happen. Like, that's things that people don't see, you know, at the show, and I think it's so important, and she has the best attitude ever she's like a little she's literally like half my size honestly she's this <laughs> she's a mom of three and she is I think a year older than me I'm 31 so she's 32 and I just feel like she is just so sweet and I want to point her out because those people don't get that credit because not everybody sees that and that's important to know speaking of not getting credit this just popped in my head while you was giving that oh. extremely long shout out there <laughs> Who would you guys say is the hardest working person on Hot Girls on Fire show? Out of us two? No, it's, I'm always more than just you two. There's other people that help make this thing come to life, right? Oh, uh, y'all want to say y'all want to say it together on yeah. count of three? One, two, three. Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. Kennedy yeah. edits our show for us. And like, we love our graphic to our art team created that. So it, it, this is like, everybody does something. I feel like Jamie's the one who said we should do this in the first place. She's like, you two do a podcast. And that's how it happened. <laughs> yeah. And then our web, our web um, person, Cindy, she makes sure that it gets, I mean, Megan and I literally just talk. That's, that's all it. that we, that's all we bring to this table. It's everybody else that does everything. Kennedy edits it. She throws in funny stuff. Um, our art team makes killer graphics and promotes it. Cindy gets it on the site. I mean, we really just talk. So we wouldn't be, and that's another reason that we think you're so amazing is you do everything that those four additional people do on your own. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. But let's let's hang on Kennedy for a while. Because, you know, I was She's talking to her. Me. I was talking to her and I said, look, man, we got to get you from behind that camera. And I want to bring all my shows. So maybe I can motivate her to come because I told her the work you do, I know how hard it is to do editing, especially behind all the laughter y'all put in. So she's probably got to do a lot of cleanup. <laughs> so <laughs> I think what she's doing is phenomenal. And also she's, she's also like my little sister too. Cause whenever I see her, she gives me the, the uh, uh, uh. And so I think she needs, she's always hiding behind the scenes. She never, she never gets in front and gets her praise. So I'm kind of like trying to give her some love and flowers. So when she sees this, there you go, Kennedy. Oh, she's gonna cry. She's going to cry editing this. Hey. I'm not kidding. I'm going to make sure that she edits this tomorrow when I'm in the office and I'm not going to say anything. And I'm just going to sit yeah. there and like wait for her to do it and be like, what? <laughs> she she is, man. She's, she's so humble. I mean, I'll be like, man, you do a great job and nobody knows that's her until y'all say it, but. I mean, it's something that she's just, she's just quiet about it. You know, so. Kennedy started, well, Kennedy's been here since she was born, but <laughs> Kennedy, <laughs> Kennedy, a 
officially started it with me like six years and we were both kind of started at the same pace and she what she started with like doing in the beginning and what she does now is like 10 million times more it's crazy the wow. amount honestly yeah. media med ranch like all she handles all of our yt stuff the editing of videos creates graphics that stuff's hard i i don't know how to do all of that so yeah sound like sound like i need to steal kennedy and bring it on htm on the line <laughs> oh you gotta watch it we didn't bring you on here to steal our people hey i'm, yeah. I'm recruiting too <laughs> Ehawk is trying to like set some division of us trying to. Like, He's trying to derail hot girls on fire. There you go. Kennedy, come join me. I got space for so, you. Kennedy, she's also our office cheerleader. So when we're talking about just like our MD publishing team as a whole, she's the one that I I don't know if John assigned her that role or if we just all looked at her and was like, okay, you're the main person that brings sunshine to some of these meetings. Like just keep doing it throughout the year so she like one day was like we should do a bingo and she like yeah. bought a mustache and glasses and a pocket watch and we played office bingo and it was so wow. much fun and like just small things like that like you're right people don't get recognized sometimes because they're not the loudest and most even though she is so outgoing um they're not always brought to the front of the shows or the podcasts and stuff so shout out yeah, yeah. and you guys i got you guys are doing great too Last question, Bihawk, uh -oh. and then we'll let you go. Who's your favorite MD publishing employee? Yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite MD publishing employee? Oh, man. Oh, gosh, man. You can say John, it's fine. No, nah, no, it ain't, no. No, nah, it ain't John. <laughs> Either one. Oh, man. Um, If I had to say, and all of you guys are special. It could be Jamie. It's gonna yeah. be Jamie. It's gonna be it's Jamie. Always, yeah. It's always Jamie. No, but I'm gonna tell you why though. I told her this. My first expo was in Vegas, and I didn't know a single person. And I had on my little Beehawk hat. And she said, What's up, Beehawk? Come sit down here next to me. And she really, I don't know if she does it for everybody, but she made me feel like I was special. And from that point on, anytime we talk, we she always was like, Beehawk, what's up? How you doing? And to this day, we're still super, super cool. So yes, I'm a little biased, you know, she's my favorite. No, yeah. that's fair. She makes, she, and I'm not just saying this, like she literally makes everybody, like there's something about everybody that makes them feel special. Like that. She yeah, does she, the small things. She listens. I sent her, 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 her my address, she sends me a picture. Is this your house? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <I stand there. laughs> so she's, She's so amazing. That's I so know, funny. I want my Stanley Cup. I don't want you to take a picture of my house. <laughs> she knows just, <laughs> Yeah, so, but, you know, Kristen, you're a second. You, you're a close second to me. Yes! Yeah, Let's yeah. go! What the heck? Hey, she's, my, she's my little sister, man. You're close, you're close, you're close, you're close. You know. Second is the best. Yeah, favorite, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> No, we love everyone. This has been so fun. Oh my gosh, I'm giggling. So, so I got one more now. So who's y'all favorite? <laughs> who's y'all favorite HTM professional? You. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You know, come on, Megan. Who? You know, you can't say John. <laughs> it's not John. <laughs> don't say any of those guys at that other company that you say is supposed to be our number one fan. I won't give their company no plug. You know. Oh. That's not them. <laughs> um, actually, I don't think I have, I don't know who would be my favorite. Oh, you know who my favorite is? And I love her to death. It's Allison Wolford. I am obsessed with her. That's she a good one. Our yeah. wife here, but like, I just, I love her. Also, I love Dewan James too. Such a kind human being. It, you, just, you just mentioned both names together, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's too many. It's so Kennedy hard. Kennedy because... edit that part out, Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy puts devil horns on Megan for the entire podcast. <laughs> Allison, she's she is super cool. Allison too. She's see, There's, I'm responsible. Honestly, I know you I'm didn't ask me this. For her but... too. Coming. Go ahead. Yeah. Go, what? I was gonna say you didn't ask me this, but I'm gonna answer anyway. My favorite thing about the HTM industry is this, like, not even being able to name like my favorite well 
other than you. I have so many favorite people because <laughs> I'm second hey. second. You're just jealous. Hey. Um, <laughs> it's honestly like so. I grew up in a small town, and like my favorite thing about growing up in a small town was how close everyone was. Like, and that's how I just feel like the HTM industry is. Is it's a huge industry, but it feels like a small town because you see a lot of the same people, but you're always meeting new people. And when you meet new people, you make connections and you hopefully get to see them again because they want to come back and continue to go to the shows and be connected. So having a million people off the top of my head that I can think of are my favorite people in the industry just shows how amazing everyone is that's in it. And there's more to come. And that's the that's the the culture of New Orleans, which is probably why I'm more like I am because New Orleans is like that. Everybody is family. When you first meet them, and my wife always jokes with me and tells me that um, when I, at my funeral, they're going to say Brian Hawkins, the guy who never met a stranger. And that's just the people like that. That's our culture growing up here. Everybody's family. And that's just something I take to me when I go to, when I talk to people in the industry, I treat everybody like family, yes, except my little sisters and cousins, you know, I got a few. Yeah. Like hey. We can take it. Uh, yeah, right here for a reason. We can take it. <laughs> See that, you know. <laughs> well, um, yeah, where can everybody find you? Where should they go? You can find me um, in New Orleans, of course, but not. Nah, um, HTM, <laughs> HTMOnline.com. That's my website. And if you go on my website, it'll give you all my other platforms from that point on, or LinkedIn. But HTMOnline.com, it's easy. Just go on there, you get everything on there. We'll link it in the comments, guys, so you can go check out B Hawk's podcast and everything that he does. And make sure you hit him up because he's everybody's big brother. <laughs> Four cousins. Four cousins. Yeah. Except for the old ones. I'm their little brother then. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, one thing I did do too, I didn't know if I mentioned this, with my mid my videos, I tried to um put light on a HTM professional each time I do a video and how many y'all think I did last year? If you had to put a own number on it so far, how many HTM professionals you think I've highlighted? Take take a guess. I've done a hundred videos, so that just gives you at least a hundred. But I was gonna say, but you always have a couple people in each one that you highlight. I don't know. I'm gonna say like four fifty. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> That's crazy. I was gonna say like two hundred. Close 185. Dang. Yeah. And that's pretty challenging to find 185 people in the industry. Yeah. You no. Know, and and I like the part when they wake up in the morning, they'd be like, Man, you did a video. Out. And it just warms my heart, you know, to know that they appreciate it. And that really inspires me too. So that's where I get my motivation from. Aw. Love that, B Hawk. All right. Well, I guess we got to go, right? <laughs> yeah. I think, talk about Kennedy being um, your favorite person. She will actually be your least favorite person if we keep going because she's going to say it's too long. We got to cut it. So that's why, I, that's why I gave her that love. So she's going to be so inspired. <laughs> she's going to just go on and on and on. <laughs> great, great job, Kennedy. Great job. Thanks, Kennedy. <laughs> well, I thank y'all for having me on. I appreciate you guys. I mean, I'll come anytime you know when y'all first told me y'all was gonna do it. I was your biggest cheerleader. I'm still him. So wow. continue doing what you're doing. If you need me, you know I'm here for you. Thanks, oh. Bihawk. Have you on anytime except when Sydney's on. <laughs> that creek <that> girl, huh? <laughs> I feel like we can't show this podcast to our team. People are gonna be so upset. <laughs> I'm a little scared. I love you, Sydney. Okay. You know, we, we cool, Sydney. <laughs> Everyone's good. All not, us. Or the second favorite. And maybe not even the third, Sydney. I don't know where I'm at either. So <laughs> you okay, work harder. There you go. Work harder. You you getting up too late. No. Listen, Kristen, I just better suck up, okay? <laughs> she Kristen actually answered my text messages though, you know, you see. And your calls, even when I'm in my boxing class and it I accidentally texts you back. Sorry about that. Exactly. There you go. You know. <laughs> happens all the time but megan's too busy running marathons you know you know oh my god no actually that one day you guys were texting in that group text i was running a 10 miler and i was dying i was like i can't answer you guys <laughs> <laughs> proud of you 
Well, everyone, this was so fun. We definitely need to do this again. Yep. 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 Three Thanks. months from now, every quarter. Okay. <laughs> every quarter. Marking <laughs> in. Yep. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.